Good afternoon, everybody. This is a video recording of uh, lecture 21, which is the microsequencing and control. So, um, in this lecture, we are going to study uh, the sequencing and control part of the central processing unit. Okay. Okay. So now let's look at what happens when you want to do a task. Let us say a task where you have to add three numbers. Okay, three plus two plus one. Let's say. Now to go from that task to an actual solution at machine level, what you will need are the following. You will need an assembly program, as you've seen in your EC one hundred and ninety. You will need, and that assembly program will now get converted into a sequence of smaller instructions or micro instructions right so this assembly program now goes through some sort of a register transfer and gets converted into these smaller sequence of instructions each of these uh, instructions are called micro instructions right and that is step 3 okay so now What this means is that for a single uh, operation, single instruction such as add, you now have multiple micro instructions. Okay? So each of these, so for example, all of these micro instructions correspond to the fetch stage, these correspond to decode, and then there, there are others that correspond to uh, execute. Okay. So Now, if you look at uh, the LC3, uh, the LC3 uh, hardware picture, and you look at uh, the values of the control signals during, uh, say, the execution phase of the add operation, then you will see that a single micro instruction corresponds to a, this particular state in the hardware, right? So. This does not, as written here, this does not include the fetch stage or the decode stage or the other execution phases, right? Uh, so what this shows is that every micro instruction needs to be mapped to a distinct control state in the hardware. Okay. So first you have the instruction, which is the big unit, then you have multiple micro instructions, right? And each of these micro instructions corresponds to a different state in the hardware. Okay, or uh, every stage of these micro instructions, like a fetch stage, decode stage, or an execute stage, corresponds to a different state in the hardware. So, the number of control states in the hardware for a given instruction are many, many more than uh, uh, the number of instructions themselves. So each micro instruction now consists of information corresponding to two things. One is what is the next state of the hardware depending on what has been done in this state. Okay. So this state that you see here, a state is basically a unique evaluation of all the control signals in the system. right? So this particular state of the hardware is what is happening now in this cycle, right? But every micro instruction will also contain the information of bits corresponding to next state. So what happens in the next uh, cycle as well as what is the control word. So a control word is basically a concatenation of all the control signals. Okay? So now let us look at what this means in the context of the LC3. Okay, this distinction between instructions, micro instructions, and control word. Okay, so if you look here. Okay, we can divide the LC3 into three broad parts. Okay, or in any processor for that matter, into three major subsystems. One is the memory subsystem or the I.O. subsystem. One is the data path subsystem. So this is the subsystem that 
uh, actually manipulates the data that will uh, add operands or subtract or increment or whatever have you. This is all the data path manipulation and this is the control manipulation. Okay, so, the control unit or the control subsystem uh, is what we are going to focus on in this class and what it has is a control ROM. Okay, so, it has uh, some sort of a uh, memory which keeps into account all the different distinct states that the system can be in. Okay, and all of these distinct states are states which are uh, which are maintained inside this control ROM only. So, the instructions themselves sit inside the main memory. Okay? So, if you remember uh, the MAR is where you bring the next instruction from, from the memory address register. right? That refers to the main memory. Whereas, once, once these instructions are out of the main memory and they have been manipulated with the, uh, in the data path, which means they have been decoded. Uh, or sometimes even executed, then what happens is that they go, they send out control signals to the control ROM and the control ROM then determines what needs to happen next. Okay? So, the, in other words, if you want to look at it uh, this way, then a control ROM is the one that takes you through that finite state machine of the LC3. So, it takes you from one state to another. Okay? So, in this control ROM, now let us let us look at the internal structure of this control ROM. So, uh, as far as, so on this slide all you need to remember is that the instructions themselves are stored in main memory, whereas the micro instructions are stored in binary format in the control ROM. Okay? Now, uh, the control ROM, there are 49 signals in the control ROM and 39 of these belong to data and 10 of these belong to control. So, let us look at that in the next slide. Okay. So, when you look inside the control ROM, let us see what happens. So, we have a, so the control ROM is, uh, has got 64 address rows, 64, why 64? Because these correspond to the true to the 6 or 64 different states in which the finite state machine of the LC3 can be in. Okay. And the columns are 49 in number. So, 39 of these columns correspond to data. So, this would include your load MAR, load MDR, load IR, load DEN, etcetera, etcetera. All the things that we have looked at in previous lectures, these are signals that tell you when to latch the data, when to uh, place the data on the bus, when is the data valid and so on and so forth. So, these are control signals, but they are connected with data manipulation. Okay? So, if you look in the previous picture, these are the control signals, 49 of them, which are going right back into the data path. Okay? But, there are some control signals that do not control the data, they control the control. Okay? So, that is a recursive definition, but what it means is that these are signals that tell the finite state machine where to move the pointer next or where to move next. Okay? And there are uh, 10 of these, if you look in the previous slide, right? there are 10 of these kinds of signals and uh, these constitute like 6 bits of what in the LC3 it is called the J bit. So, there are 6 J bits, there are 3 cond bits and there is 1 IRD bit. Okay? So, now these 6 j bits, we will, we will determine how to, uh, uh, we will go through in this class, how you come up with these 6 j bits, what is the hardware that or, or what is the logic that determines these 6 j bits. Uh, we have a table for telling us what these 3 con bits should be. So, for every micro instruction, there is a separate, uh, th there is a, a, not a unique, but a uh, corresponding set of cond bits. Okay? So, uh, these cond bits will encode the 8 different types of conditions under which the next state of the system becomes different. Okay? So, 0, 0, 0 would be no change and then the rest of them would be a certain condition which you have to look out for and if that condition is true, then you change state. We will go through that table uh, in this lecture as well. The IRD bit is yet another uh, 
de determining factor in what is going to be the next state of the uh, hardware. So, this could be uh, this the, the presence of a 1 or a 0 will determine what which is the next state that we go to. Okay. okay. So, the LC 3 has a micro programmed control unit. This is in contrast to having a hardwired control unit, which means that uh, the control depends upon uh, certain binary instructions or binary words, but it does not, but these are not controls that are wired into the hardware. The hardware does not have it as a permanent control. Okay. Now, so the microcontroller is an important uh, entity that you should know about. The microcontroller reads a micro instruction from the control store. So, from that control ROM, a microcontroller will read the micro instruction and then it activates the control signals for the data path for the MUXs, tri state buffers, etcetera, in the data path. So, the microcontroller is, if you go back to this picture here, the microcontroller would be on this. Uh, on this path, right? It reads the data. It reads the control signals, uh, for 49 of these control signals, and figures out what needs to go to the data path, okay? And which of these need to be routed where to the data path, right? Uh, whereas, uh, okay. So now the LC3 state machine has 64 states. As we said, uh, every micro instruction is stored as a separate state. Okay. So, now each state corresponds to one word in the control ROM. Okay. So, this is just a random uh, snapshot of what the control ROM may look like. We will actually go through how you come up with these values in uh, the latter half of the lecture, but here you see that there are, uh, uh, th this is reiterating the same point that bit 0 to 39 are all uh, data signals. So, control signals pertaining to data rather. And um, for example, if you have an LD1, then somehow 0 to 39 will have signals that pertain to uh, the data path of LD1, whereas the control part of LD1 or, this or the uh, bits between 39 to 48 will determine what is the next state if you execute LD1. Okay. We can go through this in detail in the other slides. Okay. Now, so just to crystallize what we have studied so far, instruction in main memory, micro instructions for every instruction in the control ROM. Okay. Control ROM has 64 states, 49 uh, bits, so 64 rows, 49 columns. 39 of these uh, control signals will go back into the data path, 10 of these control signals will go back into the control unit itself, because they determine the next state of the system. 